at one point in the Martian, the um, they well, a guy on the ground named Rich Purnell works out a means by which Hermes could go back to Mars from its current course. And it involves using Earth as a slingshot and then going out and they'll pass by Mars with a hyperbolic trajectory. They're not gonna be able to go into orbit and then they'll come back to Earth. And um, so I actually plotted out that course. Um, the way I, I did it was I, I, well, first I went online and said, so Hermes is a spacecraft that is uh, propelled by ion propulsion, uh, which is real technology. And it's basically got a very small amount of acceleration, but it's got it going all the time. And so it's always thrusting just very, very little. Um, and so I said, well, how do you even do the math on calculating orbital trajectories with something like that? How does NASA do it? And I found out they cheat. They do it by simulation, you know, just massive, just really, really small time slices simulation. So I'm like, well, I can do that. So I wrote software to do the simulations for me. And I, I wrote software to let me try to plot courses and say, okay, at this point, change your angle to this and always be thrusting this way for a while and so on. And I adjusted and adjusted and adjusted until I found a sequence, a, a path, a, a set of maneuvers that would actually allow them to get all the way back to Mars. Well, first I plotted out their original course. Then I plotted out their adjusted course because they left about 25 days earlier than they planned to. And then I plotted out the, the, the Rich Purnell maneuver. And um, yeah, that was a huge amount of work. And um, then th that's also ultimately what led me to fix the date that it took place because I had to know where Earth and Mars are at, that, at those times. And I'm like, okay, then this launch, Earth and Mars have to be this many degrees apart from, you know, to, from the sun to be, um, for this to work at the initial launch window. And then, so when are those launch windows? And it's like, so every two, two years and a month or two, the cydonic period of Earth and Mars, um, I'm like, okay, it can be any of these. But for a plot point, I needed them to be on Mars. Their original plan was to be on Mars on Thanksgiving day of that year. So I'm like, okay, which ones of these end up with this day following, you know, uh, with Thanksgiving following within these 31 days? And it ended up being like, oh, only this one window will do. And, and so that's why I end up, okay, now I know the exact launch window and everything. So I ended up with a spreadsheet where I knew exactly what date, real world date, each soul was and so on. It's so way the hell more research than was necessary. One fun thing that happened was, on the day that Mark was calling them with Pathfinder, on the day when he first made contact with them um, on Pathfinder, um, works out, turned out to be February 14th. It was Valentine's Day. And I was thinking about making some sort of joke. It's like, you know, all these guys, all these like researchers and stuff like that, all these like science dorks, like they're at work on Valentine's Day. And it's like, oh, sorry, this must be really disappointing to your girlfriends. Oh, that's right, you don't have any or something like that, right? But it would have just seemed so out of left field to the reader. It's like the reader would have gone like, why the hell did he randomly decide that this would be Valentine's Day? What the, you know, so I just didn't do it. It's one of those cases where truth is stranger than fiction. And so I had to leave it out because it would have been weird 